Welcome to the Creative Community. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is painter Chris Potter. Chris, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I mean, I love your stuff, so I'm really excited that you're here. <laughs> um, and, you know, I um, was, I, I've been wanting to have you on the show for a while, but I was immediately sort of um, uh, inspired to do this because I got an email from you saying that you were having a Christmas show yes. at your new studio over in Hollister. Um, and you know, that's one of the things that I'm really intrigued about your work that I think I want to talk about, uh, which is that you are a full-on artist who makes his living with his paintings. Yes, this that's, is true. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty and it's not, yeah, it's not, not everybody can do yeah, it. You know, yeah. Well, let's, I mean, let's go to that. You just, this was this past weekend. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Oh, it, was, it was amazing. Um, I do it where I trade for everything. Mm -hmm. So I painted paintings to trade for a pizza oven right. and a keg of beer <laughs> and 60 bottles of wine. Right. And um, so it comes together, you know, we still spend some money on it, but it comes together fairly kind of grassroots. Right. Um, and then um, the rain stopped just in time mm -hmm. uh, so that I could set up. I had over 200 paintings. Oh, man. Um, so what I do for my big shows at home is that I, um, gather them all from around the town because I have them at different displayed places right. and then I bring them all back together for one big show. Mm -hmm. um, and we had probably over a hundred people mm -hmm. there. Um, and I sold 30 paintings, oh. maybe even more than wow. that. I sold a bunch of small ones, right. you know, $180 ones that right. I sell. Right. Um, those are, you know, like little Santa Barbara gems that people, yeah. people love. Um, so it was super successful. Like I usually do a show in May and that it was kind of a a st I hadn't done a, a holiday show, but mm -hmm. people always are trying to find me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I figured it'd be better to have something good, yeah. where, like, okay, everybody come to me on the same day, yeah. you know, rather yeah. than trying to meet people yeah. individually. Well, so, Christmas yeah. is a good time to be celebrating. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, um, before we start looking at your paintings, and we have some really gorgeous images, tell me how you got started. Um, well, um, growing up, you know, you always hear the same things about being an artist, which yeah. is you'll starve. Um, right. So I didn't want to starve. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> I got into college as like a computer science major uh -huh. and then a like psych major and I was taking art classes and I finally was, I finally, basically all my notes and all my psych classes were like 90% doodle <laughs> and like a couple little bullet points right. of what the speaker was talking about. Um, and I just decided then at, at 20 years old that I would be an art major, first of all, and that I would do art every day. Uh, now, where was this when you were? This is at UCSB. Okay. Yeah. You were going to do art every day, and have you lived up to that? I have pretty much. Now I'm five days a week. Right. I'm allowed to take some days off. Yeah, now. I mean, you know, um, you're getting up there a little. <laughs> right, but um, it's like a dedication, you know. Yeah. I, I felt depressed kind of if I didn't do uh -huh. it, you know. A, a couple days would go by, and I'm like, what am I doing? i got to yeah. get this out of me. So, um I had to be a stockbroker for 10 years. After I got, a, I got my degree in art, right. and then when I got out of school, I, I looked in the newspaper for abstract artist jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's and nothing then there. They were all gone. There wasn't any there. So, um, and I was doing these big abstract paintings that were kind of, um, you know, kind of older people would be like, oh, what were you smoking? And, you right, know, they're right, kind right. of trippy. I mean, I think they're just beautiful abstract right. paintings, personally. Um, but there was just kind of a new school style. and. So I had to get a job as a stockbroker, um, and I did that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, the whole time I did that, I kept up to my pact of uh, working doing every art day. every yeah. day, up to the point where um, near the end I had my I had a tie on, and yeah. I would go out with my... Um, <laughs> you flip your tie over your head. Yeah, I would go out with my easel on the streets of Santa Barbara, yeah. and um, I'd paint what I see. You know, right. That's what I do now, is instead of abstract paintings, I go outside and I... Paint. Set up my easel and I find a view that I love or a p corner, you know, uh -huh. and um, just paint paint what I see right in front of me. And how quickly does that take place? Let's go back to those really small yeah. ones. Is, it, yeah. is that something you can do when 
Well, back in the day, it was taking me two or three lunches <laughs> um, to do a little one. Right. Now I can do them. I can do, if I really hustle, I can do it in 25 minutes. Wow. If it's, if it's a beach scene, I can right. do it really you fast. Know, you know how, what to do, yeah. Right, yeah. 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 No, or I just, the, the, the barrier between the brain and the eye <laughs> and the canvas, there isn't, there, there's no, it's just automatic. there's no yeah, friction yeah, in between right, right, that. Yeah. It's just like, okay, that's yellow, that's, a, you right. know, and then. My, I mix color like really fast, mm -hmm. so like I just can mix a color in like seconds. You know? When you go back yeah. to the, the, like, the everyday thing, because as a, a poet, I've periodically throughout my life said, I'm gonna write a poem every day, and I'll sometimes go for two or three years where right. I do that. I almost always stop ultimately because I feel like <laughs> I'm just doing the same damn thing, or right. I'm doing something that's not that good, or something that would benefit from, you know, right. from a, an extended period of time, and then I just think, okay, it's it's time for me to stop because I, I've kind of I've done all I can do. Do you ever have right. that feeling? Totally, yeah. totally. I've had several, not burnouts, but just points where I'm like, I can't do this. Right. I can't keep doing this every day. Like I got to take a break from right. it. Um, but I always am able to come back. Um, and the the key with my process now is that I'm going outside. And I'm seeing something new, or I'm right. seeing something in a new condition that g inspires me. So, the landscape is feeding me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The the inspiration from that I'm getting out there is causing it to be a, something new that's mm -hmm. not going in a in a spiral. Right, right. Which my abstract work started to get that way. That's why I switched because I was like, I'm just doing yeah. the same thing yeah. over and over yeah. again. I needed new info. So. Um, in the last, I quit my job in 2009, um, and I've done almost 3,000 mm -hmm. paintings outside. That's a lot. <laughs> which is plenty. Like 300 a year is about what I'm at. <laughs> well, we got, we got 20 of them. So let's take a yeah. look at the first one, and, and okay. we can start to, to take a look at, at your work for people who, who don't recognize. There are people who, who may recognize and don't, oh, that's the right. guy who does this. All right. right. Yeah, yeah. No, people are always like, you must be Chris Potter when they just see right. the painting because yeah, right. they see the style. Yeah. Um, so this is that old is gas cool. station out by Elwood, right? Right, which um, I went to Elwood School. So um, I always thought it'd be cool to live there. <laughs> or, you know, there was yeah. like, there's something mysterious about it, you know, a closed up gas right. station with cool architecture. Um, so that's why I chose this one is because it's, this is kind of my roots. It'd be right there. And then in the next painting, um, that's Devro, right? Uh, the Devro Slough, and I was allowed to walk by myself Where from uh, second grade on, you uh, know, just to go cruise. So we would go out. I would go and catch lizards, and you know, go out to the beach and go bodyboarding, and um, that's just that's your that's your that's what I, yeah. And I, I realized like in sixth grade we were going every day, and I was like, this is I love this is what I love to do is like to walk out into nature and hang out, uh -huh. um, and that's basically my job yeah. now. <laughs> oh, can we go back to that first image? Because yeah. well, it yeah. just struck me that it looked a lot like a Van Gogh. I mean, is, is yeah, he an yeah. uh, inspiration at all? Of a ton. Okay. I mean, he's my favorite <laughs> yeah. artist. Yeah, I mean, that's far. like the orange, the shadows, right. uh, that really... Slightly skewed per perspective. Right, exactly, um, yeah. Big strokes, mm -hmm. yeah. real real strong color points. Right. Um, so that's, yeah. that's a touchdown for you. For sure. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I would, um, you know, when I was a stockbroker, I would just click through images all day long when I was, <laughs> I was when you weren't working. working. I was working. No, I, I wasn't working. Um, no, I just, and then at home, I would, I just, I look through the pages of all the books I have of yeah. Go, and I just, yeah. keep, you know, you kind of, you do assimilate it after a little right. while. It starts to be inside of your consciousness. Right, yeah. Well, and I think one of the things that so many people respond to about that is just that rich, luscious color. Right. And you've got that. In yeah, yeah, well, I hope. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> I think, I think you made it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. So let's take a look at, at the, the third image here. Um, uh, this okay, is so this is one of the, from this year. Okay. I made that this year. And um, it's, again, another one of those big color big color paintings. And But then it's, it's, you know, it has, like, a painterly expression to it, but everybody knows where it is. I mean, mm -hmm. not, most people do know what building that is. It's mm -hmm. a libero building. Um, the point of my style is to also not get in the way of what people know about the place, uh, okay, yeah. right? You know, because then, you know, you want their memories there, you know, the right. people that work there, I know. So when they see it, they think of like all the time right. that they spend. But, it, but at the same time, it's not a hyper-realistic image, right. you yeah. know? I mean, it's still, it's clearly through your vision. Right. But, and I, and I think that's one of the wonderful things about your paintings is that it does meet some middle ground where it's mm -hmm. like, 
it's clearly painted by Chris Potter, but yeah. <laughs> it's like, I remember, oh, I was yeah. just there or, you know, I was totally. there, um, which is, you know, one of the things about having you as our yeah. artist, you know, kind of uh, artist laureate in a way yeah. <laughs> for the town. When you look at that Libero building um, painting, do you see it, is it much different from what you were doing 20 years ago? Years ago. You know, I just I just recently went and looked through my big archive right. of like older paintings when I first was doing landscape paintings, mm -hmm. um, and um, and even the abstract ones they're they're all really good. <laughs> they're pretty good, like for what they are back right. then. Technically, I've gotten better. Uh -huh. um, In what way? But I think just working with the paint, uh -huh. working with the paint, and knowing how to mix colors, okay. and, you know what I mean. Just all the technical aspects uh -huh. of it. Um, you know, using better canvas supports okay. and preparing the canvas. Okay. You know, all the, there's a lot of the, like mechanics that go into making it nice and easy to make uh -huh. a real crisp, nice image, right? right? Yeah. Um, but um, no, like I'm kind of have some of the same vibes going on. And if I can't, like looking back at those ones from my earlier years, it's really inspiring to me because I've, I've forgotten things, mm -hmm. you know, like you only get to be ignorant once, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, a lot of people are like, oh, I should take lessons and do that. I'm like, well, it's kind of good to figure stuff out on your own. Uh -huh. I mean, that's where the true genius right. comes from, right. you know, like is by trying to solve a problem by yourself, right. so, which I did that all when I was first going outside and painting. I didn't read books. I didn't go take classes or anything. I just kept doing it myself. And then after like two or three years, I went and read a couple things and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I, just, that, I struggled yeah. with this for <laughs> yeah, years yeah. and this guy had it written, but it wouldn't have the same context had I not already if you hadn't already struggled had with those it because then you immediately them. knew what what you were missing and you could, you could fix yeah that, yeah right? it's just you know like you know like every painting even now even after I've done three thousand mm -hmm. in the last right. ten years it's always like this is going to be a beautiful painting this is going to be the best one I've ever made then it's like yeah, this isn't really looking that good and I, I doesn't doing what I want it to and then. Well, then you oh wait here's a little bit of light and then you just you're tired and yeah. you get to the end of it and uh -huh. it's I put everything I had into it right I'm not a good judge of my paintings yeah. like the minute after I'm done yeah. I, I could leave them on the right. side a lot right. of them and then later you look at it and you're like wow okay I went through that whole process you know it's a process yeah. well and I think that's one of the again I'm going back to my experience as a poet when you're working like this, this a poem a day. You put everything into that particular poem. You're not saving anything for the right. for the next <laughs> yeah, go around. Exactly. It's, it's all yeah. there. Everything right. that you've got, and then you got what you got, and, yeah. and you move on to the and next. And then you one. move on to the next. And yeah. that's what I try to. When people are learning how to paint, they take a lot of these classes and they work on a bigger painting. Mm -hmm. And it takes them. You know, they's like, I don't know when it's forever done. Today, uh, right. You know, no, they just keep keep right. working on it. I'm yeah. like. First thing is, is you need a goal in mind. What is this painting about? Right, right. <laughs> like, that's like the first thing. Most painters, most people that start, they don't know what they want out right. of it, so they'll never know when it's done. Right. So you have a goal in mind and then move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. do the best you can and then mm -hmm. move on. So I, I always prepare, I, like in my class, we do small ones, six by eight ones, mm -hmm. and then you get that expression out, and then the next day you come out, it's a new day, mm -hmm. a new mind, and new then you try to do yeah. something else. Right, yeah. Right. Let's so, go back and yeah. keep on looking at, at, our, uh, at our images here. Which most of these I do in one day. Is that like, right? Yeah, yeah. You did I this mean, one in one day? Yeah, I did that in one day. Wow. Well, well, yeah. Go away. Let's come back to that. Hold on. That one's seven <laughs> nights. So that's let's, go, let's go back to the one that you did in one day. Yeah. The, all right. So this is a courthouse. How in the hell can you do that in one day? It's, ju it's just like um, instinct, you know, uh -huh. letting it go. And I like I attack it. Mm -hmm. I go as fast as I can. Yeah. And I just I really want to capture the moment. Part of the part of being able to do that is knowing the future. Okay. Knowing what it's going to look like in five hours. Oh, okay. Right. So, so you're anticipating the light changing. Right. Or paying attention while you're painting and going, mm -hmm. oh, that's it. That's the that's, that's the, the combo moment. I want. Yeah, so right. I'm going to keep the shadows there I and that. then. Um, so it, yeah. it, it, this would be from you standing across from the, the yeah, library right the parking library. lot. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so are you on the sidewalk? Or yeah. It, w people walking by, does yeah, that bug all you? All the time, no. Because no. I, well, I, when I was a broker, I was going out on State Street, uh -huh. and people would always come and walk by and yeah. talk, and um, I just p keep painting when people talk to me, and then I let them know when I'm done uh -huh. with, the, with the conversation. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you just stop talking. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good right, now. Right, I'm right. gonna move on. But you will yeah. engage in a little bit. Yeah, of yeah. Well, yeah. a lot of people buy paintings. Yeah, so right. Buy. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> uh, all right. So this is seven nights. So yeah. So this this 
painting is like one of my biggest ones from my past and that really formed me and, and inspired me just by doing it. Um, How so? Well, it's at night, first mm -hmm. of all, which is just like, like, it's like having a Christmas morning all the right. time because like you get this extra time like uh, that, that wasn't there before. Uh -huh. Like, cause you know, I was working in the day right. and then I would go out at night mm -hmm. when my kid, you know, the kids were, my wife would take care of the kids and I had, it was like magic for me. It was like mm -hmm. all of a sudden I had these extra hours of right. time. Um, so, yeah, that's beautiful. and that's also that. just the fact that I can draw architecture and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? A lot of times at the early days, I, I don't, you, when you not you think you're not good at something, you find ways to not put it in the mm -hmm. painting somehow. <laughs> you know, like oh, I'm not gonna put that in. So, this is kind of me like going, I'm not scared of anything yeah. out there. I'm not scared of the night. I'm not scared of the the proportions. I'm not scared of luminosity. You know? Yeah, no, and, and again, you know, there's that hint of Van Gogh with a starry night, except yeah. we got the palm trees. You know, the yeah. floodlit palm <laughs> trees right. beneath it. Um, yeah, it's a gorgeous. I, I need to go make another one. Of those. I'm ready. To, I'm ready for the next. All right, the map. next time. <laughs> um, yeah, I put this in there because this is like the, kind of the downtown thing mm -hmm. that was inspiring me. You know, every time you turn around a corner here, you got kind of a cute look. You do, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So. Um, well, and you yeah. know, you were just talking about drawing architecture, and it, it seems to me that you have an equal facility both with the urban landscape yeah. and the natural landscape, I mean, no trouble crossing over? No, no, it's easier to do the natural. Uh -huh. You know, much flowier, you know, big curvy lines right. and stuff. It's way easier to draw. Um, these are fun, though. These are these are fun to put people in and, mm -hmm. and to kind of to work out the scheme. And it kind of, like in a big landscape, you can kind of gobble it up in one view you're like okay i know what i want whereas these ones change with the shadows mm -hmm. and the people coming mm -hmm. in and out and it's like you you you, you kind of find a way mm -hmm. you find right. you find the moment right you know and or do you find that people come up to you and say hey can you paint x y or z specifically yeah. for me yeah i love being pointed in a direction because uh -huh. most of the time i get up in the morning and i'm like where am i going to go right so if somebody <laughs> tells you <laughs> i look at the weather and i decide whether it's windy or not uh -huh. and, you know whether, how hot it is and but it's nice when um I don't get the choice. Like people are like, "Oh, I really want this view." Like I have to do a view in Montecito this week of off their back porch. Right. I haven't seen it yet. But it's kind of awesome. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to it right. because you know I I do need to paint Butterfly Beach and this and that, but I do kind of do know what they look like. Mm -hmm. So it, it's yeah. nice to go see a, a new view. It's a challenge. Yeah, it's a yeah. challenge. Yeah. Like I've been doing ones at, at, for the brewery for the trade. Mm -hmm. I did them in M Special. I've been going there. Oh wow! Well, my daughter's at uh, soccer practice. I have like an hour to paint, and I go in there and paint an indoor scene, and it's just uh -huh. it's it's invigorating because it's a new thing, you know, right, like right. nice warm light and people yeah. sitting at a bar. Right. You know, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> a lot to recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's take a look at the, uh, the next image that we have. We got about ten minutes okay. left just to sort of uh, give us some um, perspective. You know, I put this in there because, um, like, people, what you want. Well, the treasure in life is those feelings, you know, when you come to a play, this place and it's just that feeling of the place, mm -hmm. you know, and tr like, how does that feel like that kind of magic that of just being in a place, maybe when you're a kid or something right. like that. In this so case, this it's is Alice where, Keck Park, right? Well, this is where I would go, Alice Keck Park, and, and as a kid, and it always had this kind of magical feel mm -hmm. with the lake and we'd put little boats out on it. Yeah. And um, that feeling is the, is the true meat of a painting mm -hmm. you know and it's not the images it's not the colors it's actually the feeling that's behind it so yeah. but the colors are doing a lot of work right yeah feeling. because yeah. it's yeah I'm, I'm letting that feeling come out i mean mm -hmm. those are not even really that accurate colors <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen Alice yeah. Park look like that yeah. right but, but, it, that's but it's how it looks in my yeah, mind yeah but it's <laughs> recognizable again immediately yeah. that's that thing of, of it, it's clearly your vision but you've left it right. open enough that i can i can walk in myself exactly and then, uh, yeah, you know, the city, cityscapes. Um, this is a little bit different. You get the long shadows here. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I don't like foreground. Mm -hmm. Like I, I prefer not to paint foreground. Mm -hmm. I want to paint, you know, the hills way in the distance. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we're this looking is at the Granada building. Yeah, but then with the, the Arlington, Arlington on the right. Yeah, yeah, that's the Arlington Tower shadow coming uh -huh. out. And yeah. it's like it, it needs it. You know what I mean? A big, uh -huh. big old blank street wouldn't really work with yeah. it. Yeah, so. that's great. Um, and then here's East Beach. So I spent, when I first quit my job, I would go down to East Beach. Like, I mean, I, when I first quit my job, I thought that 
I could paint eight hours a day, mm -hmm. um, that actually makes you crazy. <laughs> like you can't do it. Right. It's just impossible to be like, Paying attention. How, how many hours a day can you paint? I I mean I'll do a seven hour day sometimes. That's a long day. I'll do a seven, but then I only do one of those a week. Like it's just too much mm -hmm. for me. Okay. Um, and then so the other place I would go would be Hammonds. I kind I considered myself the mayor of Hammonds for a <laughs> while. Um, Hammonds Beach is the beach between like Miramar Beach and Butterfly Beach, right, and right. it's kind of an in between zone where. I've had days out there that are absolutely perfect, no wind, 75 degrees, uh -huh. and I'm the only one there. I was going to say, um, it's not one that you see a lot of right. traffic on, right. unless and you're then on a kayak or something. You've seen a lot of the reflections in my mm -hmm. paintings. Right. Um, people are like, how do you do that? You must use special paint or something like that. But no, it's just, I learned it right here at Hammonds, looking down this beach that's, on, that's in that image. You can, when you look down that, that glassiness on uh -huh. the wet sand, I basically kind of figured out how I figured out how to express it really quickly and enough to where it like it, it draws you in and mm -hmm. um, so that's why I put this painting up because it's um, it's kind of where I learned like that wet sand reflection mm -hmm. thing that I do all the time. It's like well, I'm thinking about like a couple times a week. <laughs> old masters, you know, making these like extensive sketches and stuff right. like that before they go to to the the. The, the real thing, the painting, but it seems like you're learning a lot as, I mean, as you yeah. continue to paint. You right, know, that, yeah, that's no, that's, well, so that's the biggest difference is that the, the hard, one of the hardest things for people to do is that, because I teach a class and I pe teach people that don't know what, they're, you know, they don't know how to paint. Right. People paint what's in their mind, mm -hmm. not what they're actually seeing. Mm -hmm. So it's like literally nobody can do it. Nobody right. can actually paint what they're seeing. It's very like one in a hundred people that mm -hmm. I've taught can actually go and look and see something new. Mostly like when they paint a tree, they're painting the apple tree from their childhood, what right. they, they did with the crayons, right. the <laughs> circle and the thing, right? They can't, they literally, it's, less, it's I know that it's just part of us. So, so how do you get somebody I have past the that? Same pro I have the same problem in that I've seen these things all the time. Right. So I'm out there painting and I'll just start painting it and I'm like, you gotta look at it. You gotta relearn it. Uh -huh. So it, it's I have to like you know pinch myself a little bit and go relook at it, refigure it out, learn something new today. You know what I mean? It's right. And, and can you can you teach the the people who don't know how to do that how to get past that? A little bit, yeah. a, a little bit at a time. You know, like just the fact that trees are not green is a big <laughs> one. It's a really big one. Yeah. Um, and then. When the painting comes together, as I'm teaching it, they see it and they right. realize it because right, right. they see their green tree, and then they see other people that were able to put a lot more red in it and right. a lot of more shadow and right. other types of things. Um, and then they're like, "Wow, you're right. It does look better that way." Because yeah. even though we want to, when we do it, we want to do what's in our mind's eye. When we see it, mm -hmm. we know it's not right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, right, yeah, right yeah. you look, at, you look back at your painting. You're like, "That, that, that does not look right." <laughs> Well, and for people who are watching right now, I might think I'd love to take some painting classes with you. Yeah. How, do, how do they do that? Um, on my website, you can just reach out mm -hmm. on, and they can just send me an email okay. and, and ask to be on my list. Okay. Um, and do so, you work with a group or just individually? or? Um, I do. Um, I have all the easels and all the material and I bring it all out and mm -hmm. set it all up for everybody mm -hmm. so that they just walk out and paint. Oh, for wow. two hours, oh. um, so it's a big project, and it's it kind of changes who my body chemistry. Right, so I right. only do it. I've I've done it like maybe, I think I did twenty classes last uh -huh. year. Uh -huh. um, you know, one a month, one to two a month. Right. Um, but yeah, if you reach out and say you want to be on my student list, I send out an email, and then it's filled up every time. I do fifteen people, I'm sure it is, and yeah. then sometimes like extra people come, so I go up to eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody walks away like. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> I made a big like, piece. Not everybody, 90% of the people there. <laughs> Other, some people do walk away like, mine totally sucks, but that was really fun. <laughs> well, anyway. As we've been talking, the, yeah. um, the, the, the images, images have been, have been, going, yeah. have been cycling yeah. through here. Let's, can we go back to the, to the previous one just for a sec? Tell us about this one right here. Um, Day of the Garrett, it's another, it's another one where I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a view I've done, no, maybe not 20 times, maybe yeah. 15 times, but it, it's for me the ultimate view of the Santa Barbara city. Okay. It's got the orange roofs. It's got the blue mountains. Uh -huh. It's got shadows. Yeah. It's got everything. So it, um, and it, and I'm standing right on State Street. Yeah, De La Guerra yeah. is the only street you can actually you can because it ends at the mall. Uh -huh. I can stand right in the right Without down the center line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like 
open there that right. everybody walks by and right, they're all right. cheering me on. Right, right, right. I was on Google Earth painting <laughs> there for like two years. I was on that, you know, when they do the studio. Right, right, right. <laughs> you that. Yeah, I and I was like talking guy. to some ladies and my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm like, she was probably trying to buy the painting. I mean, yeah, she's like, sure. <laughs> Um, all right, so this is a Cold Spring Cold Tavern. Cold Spring Tavern, yeah, I, I put this because um, of the strokes and the expressiveness of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's such a complicated view with so much stuff going on. Yeah. Like to be able to, like do you see the blue behind the house? I like do. that, just being able to homogenize that area into that blue is, mm -hmm. is it's something that I've come to. You know, mm -hmm. before I would try to draw it more and try to put all the branches in and stuff. Um, and the architecture, you can see the, the, the roof's not straight, and, you know what I mean? Well, and it's not in reality yeah. either. <laughs> no, and then the dappled light, too, is right. really yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that, that's like the, some of the funnest stuff to paint. It's kind of hard to paint, but once you can do it, it's really fun well, to paint. Well, and it's always such that. a little pocket of cold there, too, yeah. and I think you capture <laughs> yeah. that uh, exactly. as well. So here we're at the mission. Yeah, so I do a lot of live painting now. I mean, I always do, I'm doing live painting, but I do it for people, like for weddings. I do live wedding paintings, uh -huh. um, and I do very fast. So I did this in two hours mm -hmm. while they were dancing yeah. up there. Um, <laughs> and it was kind of cool. They put me in a little, I donated it to like the, the Fiesta uh -huh. Association or whatever. Right. Um, and they put me right in view, so everybody was like cheering me on. Right, and you know, right. it's pretty cool. Um, and that's like, you know, another night scene. And kind of Van Gogh-y. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now this is this is our, our big finale here. Yeah. So, <laughs> so take a, a minute to tell us a little bit about this. So um, this is Big Pine Mountain. It's the highest point in, um, in Santa Barbara County, and I um, basically I had shattered my uh, right scapula, mm -hmm. and I wasn't supposed to go on this big backpacking trip with my buddies mm -hmm. and. Um, through the help of a physical therapist and everybody, I, w I was able to go. My buddies carried some of my stuff for me. Um, I didn't, it, my arm was out of the sling and everything and my bone was mostly healed, mm -hmm. but um, I just felt really lucky to go. I didn't paint it while I was there, mm. but I just sat there and watched this sunset oh. and I realized, I was like, are you taking this photographs is, as well? I too? took a ton of photographs, uh -huh. yeah. And, I'm, and I just realized that this is what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. I'm here to, to, to bring this back mm -hmm. to everybody and show it to everybody. So it's six feet by eight feet. Which is huge. It's monstrous, it's yeah. It's better than six by eight inches, which is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, if anybody has a place for it, yeah. contact me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's waiting. Um, well, in our last sort of like... 45 seconds, any, yeah. any, any final words of advice to um, aspiring uh, painters? Um, do art every day. Uh -huh. That's like the biggest thing. That's your number and you'll, one thing. And you'll, you'll figure it out. You'll get better. And the other thing is, is that uh, there's only a new path for you. Like you can't take my path, you can't follow some other artist's right. path. Right. All art and all artists are made creating their own way to do it. Well, that's a beautiful way to end. Thank <laughs> you so much, Chris. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> The Creative Community is produced in Santa Barbara with a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Roth Foundation, directed by J.P. Montalvo with the help of his fantastic crew. I'm David Starkey, and we'll see you next time.